Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the October 14th Sustainability Working Group meeting. Um, we'd like to start off with the land acknowledgements. So Leslie, would you like to read that? Sure. Uh, we have gathered at Wilmot Township on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Mississauga peoples. We also want to acknowledge the importance of the Dish with One Spoon Covenant, a peace agreement made between Indigenous nations before the Europeans arrived. It characterizes our collective responsibility to each other and Mother Earth. We should take only what we need, leave enough for others, and keep the dish clean. By acknowledging this covenant and the First Nation, Métis, and Inuit peoples, we are reminded of our important connection to this land where we live, learn, and work together as a community. Thank you, Leslie. You're welcome. Are there any disclosure of a pecuniary interest under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act? Seeing none, a uh, review of the previous meeting minutes. Are there any issues with the minutes from the last meeting? Nope, so we have someone move that. I will. Please second by Dean. All in favor? Yep. And that's carried. Okay, so moving on to the EV charging stations update. So I do have some news. I um, did hear back maybe last week um, from the Director of Parks, Facilities and Recreation um, that the, the charging stations are on target to be installed by the end of the year. I know at the admin building, I think they started to do some locates uh, before they dig. Um, I don't know exactly how far along there, um, particularly at the admin building, but the, the response by the region was by the end of the year, everything will, will be in. Any questions on that? Councilor Fanny? Sorry, having to learn to use Zoom in a whole new way. <laughs> um, um, I saw some locates on the west side of the parking lot at the edge. Is that where, uh, it, are those the locates for those uh, EV stations? At the admin building? Yeah. I believe, yeah, it's gonna be beside the, the storage shed that's there. Okay. Well, I was wondering what the locates were for, now I know. <laughs> okay. Um, next agenda item, uh, sustainability work program. I don't have any updates for that uh, as of today, but I think the key one uh, or, or the, the, the transform of your action item list and the zero waste month update, um, those are the ones that would fall in right now. So we'll just move on to the transform WR action item list. So we sent out uh, comments on where Wilmot was identified as a, a either a participant, um, Sorry, I should pull it up before I say that. Um, participant lead, a collaborator or a supporter on the initiative. Um, so there are a number of initiatives there with all the action items listed. So I discussed at the last meeting. Staff have taken back that list, provided the comments um, where, where we could, and uh, we'll have further discussion uh, with, the, with the committee now. So um, we can either go through them one by one or if everyone had a chance to review them and we can kind of just jump to ones where um, you know, there was some that made a spark more interest for further discussion for some of the members. Um, I'm open to either option. I think I'm good. I'm okay. So, do we want to go through them or are they okay? Sorry, I was bouncing around between screens here. Um, congratulations, first of all, to somebody for finding the world's fallest, the smallest font to put this <laughs> information all onto one page. It makes me realize that my eyes are not getting any younger. Um, some of the, I mean, just a, an overall response here is that some of this I found um, really helpful to me in terms of information. Some of it is more sort of commentary as compared to kind of a, an update status, where are we at and what's the, what's the next step? Um, so the, um, <clears throat> some of the things around um, the active transportation in particular, you know, it's sort of saying, well, we're, we're on track here, um, but it's not really describing 
how we're on track or what's uh, <clears throat> what's happening. Now, I, I may have misunderstood the intent of, of this. Thanks, Dean. Um, so I think the initial the initial attempt is just kind of say what we're doing now, um, because I think there there are another um, other action items outside of the the tax of transportation where nothing is being done, and we're looking towards doing it. Um, but maybe, and I, I forgot to give uh, my thanks to Harold. Uh, Harold did provide a lot, a number of these comments, so maybe he can you know um, describe further, um, maybe to, to your comment there, Dean. Uh, sure, yeah, on active, active transportation, certainly I can circulate. Um, we actually prepared a, a map for the new CAO. We did a tour um, showing development sites and how it all integrates to the active transportation network. Um, the portions that are built, the portions still to be built and showing the, um, the land holdings that the town has acquired over the last uh, 15 years uh, between Baden and Hamburg in particular. So that's certainly a, a document I can share with this committee. Um, it's uh, it's in the public realm for, for that perspective. So it's not confidential data that we'd be sharing. It's, it's publicly owned land. It's just identifying, um, again, the components um, and it, it does identify targets to future acquisitions, um, which would come through development applications, but, uh, and it does identify those where we've applied for grants, for example, um, that we haven't heard back yet. So, um, following this meeting, I can circulate that, which would probably give you a lot of information that you probably aren't aware of, um, just from the, I can see from the written description that we have there, it suggests we're doing a great job, but it doesn't really prove we're doing a great job. So. Yeah. Um, and you may look at the information and say, hey, you're not doing a great job, and that's okay. But um, we, we do think we're ahead of a lot of municipalities um, of our size and configuration in that regard. So I'll send you the uh, photo evidence. Yeah, that would be very helpful. And does that also include anything um, in terms of plans for adding um, paved shoulders to existing roads, or is it only... Um, dedicated pathways and that sort of thing. Uh, it does highlight a couple areas where we're looking at, uh, we would call them boulevard multi-use trails um, versus, uh, because they're in regional corridors, um, the ones that we've included on the mapping would be where the township would um, look to be doing a, um, a again, a, a safe boulevard trail, not necessarily on Nassiger Road, putting a, a paved shoulder on Nassiger as as um, it's probably a safer option to try to segregate that multi-use trail. But um, we'll send the map and then if you have specific questions, okay. we can respond if that's maybe an easier way to do that. That'd be great. And then the other question I had, and, and I apologize that I'm, I'm really new at this and uninformed. Um, in, in looking at the um, comments about development and being within a 15 minute walk of stores and so forth, the comment is that as a rural area, uh, we're doing low density development. And my question is, is all of the development that's planned for the township low density? Uh, has there been any consideration of a medium density or what's the, uh, the current planning there? Uh you ash and i can uh, respond to that um low density is is more related to what you'd see in the city um you know what, what we would achieve in in rural um township uh we would still treat it as medium density perhaps some high density existing residents would probably see it as being ultra high density it really isn't um you know it, it depends on that lens and context mm -hmm. but in terms of wilmot the densities are significantly higher uh, for new developments coming in, in accordance with the official plan and the regional official plan, in terms of the people and jobs per hectare that we have to achieve. Um, we encourage developers to propose higher than that. Um, certainly, the reality is, is uh, through subdivisions when they're circulated, most of the existing population comments that, um, for example, in the Baden subdivision, that uh, densities are too high, that there's too many townhomes, there's too many um, higher units and would prefer. So it's That'll be the um, uh, discussion that council ultimately has to have, but uh, the plans are submitted in accordance with the densities required by the regional plan and the township plan. Um, so I would say 
to me, it's medium density. Um, I, I, I don't think that anything we do would be considered high density. Although again, to be fair to the neighbors, they would probably disagree and would say that it is high density compared to what they're living in. So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Ashton, I was just noticing that the businesses and households no longer use fossil fuels for heating and cooling and water heating. Action 3.2.3, develop region-wide building standards to encourage and support zero carbon development of all new buildings in the region. You need to change it from lead to collaboration. The thing says we're a lead and I don't think we could really. Okay, I'll let, uh, that's a good point. I'll let Climate Action know um, maybe in their, if they ever update or the plan, maybe that's one that should be collaborated opposed to lead. Okay. Thanks. Welcome. Okay, um, we can see, keep discussing, uh, discussing about this. Um, one of the ones I wanted to let uh, everyone know about is Action 3.1.9, um, offer uh, innovative loans and energy related residential and commercial building upgrades. Um, so I'm cur currently participating on a committee with REAP where they received FCM funding to look at uh, loan energy retrofit program. So it's for a study um, that would be for a program for the region of Waterloo, where there'd be loans um, you know, granted to businesses or residential homes. Um, and, and they're currently investigating the best way uh, if they were to implement such program. Um, so essentially the interesting part about this, where I feel like this is a, a big one um, where it would help provide opportunity to those who can't afford to, the, to do the upgrades, particularly in things that are probably more near term, um, so, for example, if you look at 3.1.5, um, where there's a you know, description of, of moving off of fossil fuels, um, you know, with, with loan energy programs will help um, those that are currently on those kind of systems to, to move away from that, um, which in terms of benefit to the lower, uh, lowering of the greenhouse gas reductions and meeting that 2030 target and, and, and also 2050 target. So um, that's kind of a big one that I, I really hope um, depending on the direction that it goes forward with REAP with their study. Um, I think it, would, it should have a, an impact depending uh, obviously on the uptake of, uh, of those that do decide to participate in the program when it is in place. Um, and I don't know exactly how it would look like. There are varying options of how a loan program would look like. So um, I, I'll keep you up to date and I'm sure depending where they land, I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, there'll be more, um, news about it uh, on, on a public perspective. So are there any other um, comments, questions on any of the comments that uh, we provided here? Okay. All right. Well, as always, if you have any questions that come up, feel free to shoot an email to the to the to the committee, and and uh, hopefully we can provide a you know response on that. And we'll obviously continue to keep working away. Um, you know, some of them are are already underway, full fledged, and some of them are in their infancy state, or some haven't even started at all. Um, and perhaps maybe maybe biannually we'll revisit this listing to see where we're at to ensure that there's accountability. Um, you know, for, for the municipality that we are taking these actions into place. Um, because again, these are actions that are stipulated to help achieve those targets outlined in the Transform WR plan. So I'll, I'll just make a note, maybe next year, um, we'll revisit the entire listing. But again, we can keep this as a standing item on the agenda, just to, if things do come up from meeting to meeting. Carol? Yeah, I was just going to add, um, just as follow up to um, my response to uh, Dean on the 15 minute neighborhood, I do have a, a plan that uh, we drafted for some residents um, to give them a concept of what a 15 minute neighborhood would look like in Baden. Um, again, the specific action item in the list talks about um, simply having a 15 minute neighborhood for growth doesn't guarantee that a grocery store is going to be able to locate there, but um, I think it is worth and I'll circulate to this committee just so you can see that 
that really that official plan policies that we have in place uh, do contemplate what a 15 minute walkable neighborhood looks like, what a 15 minute bikeable neighborhood looks like. Um, and it, it's actually quite amazing when you see what all falls within that 15 minute neighborhood. It's actually um, um, the sites of our urban growth really in, in the township really hit that that model as, as much as possible. I, again, in Baden, it's difficult to walk 15 minutes to get to grocery store, but certainly the uh, summer market, for example, would be uh, within that range as would be the, you know, sort of neighborhood variety stores that do carry some some staples, although they wouldn't be affordable necessarily to everyone. But uh, uh, so I will circulate that just as an information piece too to, to supplement that. Okay, thanks, Harold. All right, so we'll move on to the next agenda item, the zero waste month update. So uh, I just wanted to ask Leslie, if you can just provide a quick update. Th thanks for your uh, um, you know, taking the leadership uh, on spearheading this this uh, this year's zero waste month. Um, yeah, uh, well, you and um, Tanta Fenning and I had a chat about um, uh, about what we're going to do for the month. And uh, we agreed to send out an email every week. I have not sent the email out for, to, for this week, uh, but uh, this current week coming up starting on uh, Saturday to next Saturday is the Zero Waste Challenge. Uh, you can sign up through REAP or just do it if you'd like to by yourself. Um, and I believe that Councillor Fenning has challenged the other councillors um, to use, um, or try to use less and fill one mason jar. Um, I encourage everyone to at least try it. Um, see how far you know you get. It's not about being perfect. Uh, it's about just sort of keeping an eye on what you can, um, uh, you know, not throw out or reuse, recycle, you know, refuse, rot. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's going well. I think um, I heard anything bad or whatever. So it's it's good. It's good. It's fun. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> hey, thanks, Leslie. Any questions for her? Okay. All right, we'll move to the last agenda item, the tree canopy policy updates. So, Harold. Thanks, Ashton. Um, just as an update, and we kind of discussed a bit at the last meeting, but um, we have... Um, basically decided that we're going to propose it to council as a capital budget item uh, for the 2022 budget to hire a consultant, uh, develop a joint terms of reference between the departments and uh, hire a professional to manage the process, including the public consultation and work with groups like Let's Tree Wilmot and Myth Valley Eco Boosters to ensure that all the components are at the table, but to also ensure that um, um, the project gets done in a timely fashion. Um, and the reality is it's, it's beyond the resources of, of the current staffing to, um, to do that. So that's our, gonna be our recommendation to council. Council will obviously have to make a decision, but um, uh, we recognize that that's probably the best way to pull it together. And again, to ensure that um, the knowledge and experiences of other communities like Woolwich, which has a, a much more detailed plan um, uh, are incorporated. So I don't know if that's, Enough of an update, but uh, that is the plan that it would be rolled into the budget process um, later this fall. And um, hopefully, um, again, I, I haven't spoken necessarily to uh, the treasurer to get the timing that he would envision for it, but uh, um, I would hope that it would be early in 2022 that we'd, we'd do the request for proposals and, and hire someone to do that study. Councilor Penny? So just a um, uh, question then, would you say uh, to uh, Director O'Krafka, um, the hiring of the consultant, once that is in place, then it would be expected that we would be able to um, use what was produced from that um, internally and we wouldn't need to hire additional resources going forward. Uh, personally, uh, I don't know what the answer to that is. 
I think that out of the tree canopy policy, um, there may be a position required. Um, that would be up to the process to determine though. But um, with our size, with our growth, with our, our level of trails and, and woodlots, uh, we own you know over 150 acres of woodlot between Baden and New Hamburg, for example. Um, a, a resource of an arborist on staff um, might be something that would come out of that process, um, that there may be um, a role for a, a tree professional. Um, but again, I don't want to prejudge the study, but I also don't want to commit to you that that study's going to say that that we don't need a, a professional to guide uh, a significant program related in particular to tree canopy and health. Um, you know, certainly every department tries its best, but obviously I think we can all think of parks and, and trees along boulevards that probably would use a good pruning or could use some professional assistance. And um, so I just throw that out there that, that <laughs> I'm not saying there will be. I, I just don't want to prejudge that recommendation at this point. Yeah, just to follow up, I'd say it's a good thing for us to start thinking about, um, you know, what the potential outcomes uh, might be and how that, uh, you know, essentially get our get our heads around thinking that um, before it comes, perhaps. Yeah, if I can add just another comment, I, I think the other thing that, you know, we're really benefiting from the relationship with Let's Tree Wilmot and the Eco Boosters and, and Hort, Hort Society as well. Um, all those organizations are very beneficial and supportive to the overall goal. But I think the other thing that council has to, um, and the township as a whole needs to recognize is that um, I don't know that we can build a policy that solely relies on volunteer efforts and continued volunteer efforts. Certainly want to enhance and maximize that as much as possible, but the policy environment needs to be sustainable. Um, even if the volunteer efforts, uh, you know, as volunteer efforts, they tend to go in cycles. You get interested people, you get great things. And then, you know, um, as the population changes, uh, that can change. We don't want that to happen, but I think we have to be um, reasonable and not expect that our entire tree canopy policy and its implementation is going to be strictly volunteer labor. I would also like to add that it's um, important from an asset management perspective of what tree canopies and other natural assets can do for the township. Um, so I would love to have another resource as a staff member um, to help with that because um, it's something that I've been pushing for it to, um, to take uh, inventory of all of our boulevard trees specifically um, because they're very important and we get a lot of uh, I want to say complaints, feedback um, about some of the boulevard trees um, in the township. So uh, I, I really love this idea and I'm so glad that it's going through. So thank you. Dean? Yeah, Harold, just to, um, to mention here, um, an idea that we're just beginning to have conversation with Parks and Rec and, and Public Works about. Um, <clears throat> I was looking recently at a website for an organization that makes grants available to hire people short term for forestry projects. Uh, and it would, the idea would be for Let's Tree Wilmot to partner with the township on hiring a couple of students for next summer through this grant, which could help with a variety of things that uh, are being talked about. The fact that there are boulevard trees that were planted um, five years ago with stakes and ties and the stakes and ties haven't been removed. There are others that need to be staked and tied, that there are some that need to be uh, mulched to keep the mowers away from them. And the possibility of helping to water with um, all the plantings that's happening in Parks and Rec property through Let's Tree Wilmot. <clears throat> Doing some initial inventory of trees that clearly need to be replaced that don't require a professional to uh, sort of do that. So we're just beginning in conversation and <clears throat> if, that might feed into any of the work that the consultant is doing or so forth. I'll try to keep you in touch with that. So, sorry, Dean, do you mind uh, sharing that? Maybe perhaps after the meeting in an email, um, just the, you know, 
within corporate services, um, we're, we're always actively looking at grants and stuff like that. So I'd be, you'd be sure. I'm not sure if my direct has come across my director's desk yet or not, but uh, we, we definitely take a look. Yeah. Councilor Penny. Yeah, actually, um, there's another organization. There is an organization I'm aware of that um, does specifically uh, offer um, grants for things like that. So maybe we should uh, compare notes and see if it's the same organization. Okay, any other further questions or comments? Okay, thank you, Harold, for the update. So uh, we'll move on, there's no correspondence and any round table information sharing. So I'll go around the square on my screen. If anyone has any other uh, items that they'd like to bring up. So we'll start with uh, Harold. Nope. Uh, Dean. Councillor Fenning. Nope. And uh, just the technical difficulties here today. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> apologize to everyone watching, if there is anyone. And Leslie. Nope. Okay, thank you everyone for your time today. Um, and uh, just as a note, November, the next meeting scheduled for November is actually November on Remembrance Day, so there will not be a meeting. So we'll reconvene on December 9th. Okay, all right, so have a great day, everyone. Take care. <laughs>